So finally, we have come to the results and inferences. The spreadsheet uses a statistical method termed magnitude-based inference to estimate the chances that the performance has substantially changed. You can see the results of this analysis here and here. So there are four results that we can use. The first one is a change from a linear trend. So based on the test scores you have put in, the spreadsheet will calculate a linear trend line. So this is the red line shown in the figure here. So in this row, you can set which scores are contributing to the trend line by putting a one under the score you want to use to calculate the linear trend line. So all these ones are contributing to the linear trend line. So that the linear trend line is estimated from all these scores. So in this case, only the first score and test scores 11 till 14 are not contributing to the trend line. And you can see clearly, uh, because these scores are deviating clearly from the trend line, uh, we have not included them. But you can also see when I put a one below the scores 11 till 14, that the trend line will change. So one, 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 you can see the trend line is moving. I have to remove them again. So in these rows, you can see the chances and inferences based on a deviation from the linear trend line. Here you can see for the scores um, that are not used for the trend line, how they deviate from the trend. So in the 11 test, this one, you can see that the chance for an improvement compared to the trend line is 92%. The chance for a trivial change is 8%. And the chance for a decrease in performance is 0%. And the statistical inference is shown here. So the arrow indicates that the direction of the change is upward, so it is an improvement. And asterisk is shown when the qualitative inference is very likely. So there's a very likely chance of improvement um, in this case. And the very likely is when the chance of improvement or decrease is higher than 19%. And that's, that's set here, but I won't discuss this in this video. So also in the figure, you can see here that the dashed lines, which show the smallest worldwide change plus the standard error, and a value that falls outside of these lines is likely substantially different from the trend line. And that is why we need a typical error in the smallest what will change. Before we can get an inference like very likely improved, we need to know the typical error and a value for something that has at least a small contribution to performance or injury or health. And you can use these results to, for example, determine whether an athlete is fatigued or fitter than normal by seeing how they compare to the normal performance. For example, you can see here in test 11, that at least is clearly performing better than normally. So you could decide that you that the training should be uh, more intense, for example. And uh, on the other hand, when there is a very likely decrease in performance and other in some other objective and subjective measures, you could decide that the athlete or patient needs a rest day or some easy training. And if all scores are better than average, perhaps that lead is ready for competition or a hard training session, as I explained before. So this is the first sort of types of scores you can, can get from a spreadsheet. The second one is the average change from the linear trend line. So in this row, that's this one, you can do the same by putting a one into the results that you want to average to get an inference like how uh, how does the average of scores 11 till 14 deviate from the trend line? So there will be multiple inferences shown here and here, but it's actually just an average of all of these scores, but it's just hard to, to show one average. So we can see here again that there is an 89% chance of these scores being higher than the linear trend line, a 2% chance of being trivial, and a 0% chance of being lower. And this makes sense because the scores are clearly higher than the trend line. So it is a very likely improvement compared to the trend line. 
Um, you could use these results if you are interested in seeing whether a specific intervention, such as taking caffeine, has a positive effect on performance compared to the athlete's normal values. So you could essentially use this as a sort of case study with your athletes. So then the third uh, test you can get, or third result, is a change from a previous test. So sometimes you are just interested in seeing whether the athlete or patient has improved compared to the previous test you have conducted. You can see these re the results of this inference here. For example, you can see that from test 0 to 1, the chances for an improvement are 68%. So from 0 to 1 or 0 to 1 here, 68% chance of improvement, 30% uh, chance of a trivial change, and just a 1% chance for a decrease. And the inference here is possibly trivial or a substantial improvement. And for test one to two, or you can see here, it's actually just a really small improvement from 39.9 to 40.2 centimeters. You can see there is a 34% chance for improvement, a 47% chance for trivial change, and also a 20% chance for decrease. So it's actually quite unclear. So this the highest chance is a trivial change, but there's also quite a chance for an improvement or decrease. So the inference is unclear, unfortunately. So it could be just random variability. And in any way, the, the in improvement from 39.9 to 40.2 centimeters is smaller than the smallest worldwide change anyway, which we have put in here. So if it would be clear, it would probably not be relevant anyway. So finally, the fourth test result is here. And here you can see how your athlete progresses compared to the target trend line you've put in. So compared to the target trend you have put in here. So in video one, I explained that an example goal was to improve vertical jump height by two centimeters over 20 weeks or 1 point, uh, 0 0.1 centimeters per week. And we can see here that the observed ch uh, change is 0 0.21 centimeters per week and the chance is 100 percent that this is larger than our goal and indeed inference show a very likely uh, large improvement compared to our uh, target trend you should note that this is a linear trend line and changes in performance may not always be linear so in conclusion i've now briefly explained how you can use the spreadsheet to monitor performance of an individual athlete or patient the spreadsheet has many other applications, but I did not discuss them in this video. I hope that the videos have helped you to understand and apply the spreadsheet in the practice. And for all Dutch speaking individuals, I have also written an article where I explain the spreadsheet in some more detail. You can also find the link to the free download at my website. Thanks for listening.